Hello, and uh, welcome to Robo Global's fourth quarter 2019 investor call. My name is Jeremy Capron. I'm the director of research at Robo Global. And joining me on the call today are Lisa Chai and Nina Decker, senior research analyst based in New York. Before we review our investment strategies, I'd like to provide a quick update on our company. Robo Global is a research and investment advisory company that's focused on what we believe to be the next technology revolution, robotics, automation, and AI. And six years ago, we launched Robo, which was the first robotics and automation index to market. And we now offer a range of research-driven equity indices covering artificial intelligence and healthcare technologies. Today, our investment strategies are tracked by around $2.6 billion in AUM, primarily in ETFs and mutual funds around the world. And our indices are based on a research-driven selection of best-in-class companies combined with the discipline of index investing and a strong ESG policy. And as you can see on the next slide, we are fortunate to work not only with a strong investment professional team, but also with an amazing team of industry experts, including some of the most prominent thought leaders in the robotics and AI world, whom you may get a chance to meet at our upcoming investor event in London later this week. We make some of our research available on our website at roboglobal.com, and we just published our annual technology trends report, which highlights some important areas of research, including computer vision, deep learning, logistics automation, autonomous vehicles, healthcare robotics, genomics, among others. The report is available on our website at worldoglobal.com. And the next slide shows a recap of our indices performance uh, in the fourth quarter and in 2019. Uh, all three indices rose sharply in the fourth quarter. We saw double digit gains, closing 2019 on a very strong note. And you can see that the three strategies continue to deliver remarkable performance ahead of global equities in the past one, three, and five years. And please note that while the Robo Index is over five years of history, it is not the case for the AI Index and the Healthcare Technology Index. And the data presented here includes a backtest of the initial portfolio for periods prior to inception. So let's talk about Robo first. Robo is a research-driven index of best-in-class robotics, automation, and AI companies from around the world. And as you can see here, it has outperformed the World Equity Index last year with a 30% gain, but also over the past three years and five years, with annualized returns of nearly 15% in the past three years and 11% for the past five years. Performance was strong in 2019, recouping the losses of 2018 when factory automation weakening industrial markets and the trade war between the U.S. and China. The robo-index was up 11% in the fourth quarter and just over 30% for the year. And this performance was in the context of cooling trade tensions. We saw continued U.S. consumer strength and monetary easing around the world. Investors remain concerned with weak capital spending, but it has become increasingly clear that factory activity is stabilized outside the U.S., particularly in Asia, and more recently in Europe. And that is raising hopes that this industrial down cycle is not spreading into a full-blown recession. And this has been a long-held view at Robo. Up cycles don't die of old age. Uh, we're seeing consumer confidence in spending in the U.S. and China remaining strong, while the Fed and the vast majority of central banks around the world are in monetary easing mode. In the fourth quarter, we saw the global PMI for manufacturing bottom out after an 18-month decline to the lowest level since 2012. And this is setting up a new CapEx upcycle, which we believe could be reinforced by pent-up demand, as businesses need to catch up with consumer strength and delays due to the U.S.-China trade conflict. So we expect business confidence and corporate investments to significantly improve in 2020. And clearly, if there is one area where corporate investments are firmly set on a strong structural growth trajectory, that remains automation and AI. 
So we believe this setup is attractive for robotics and, uh, uh, and AI and automation stocks. Right now, uh, the equities of uh, the best companies in this area uh, are now trading on a forward PE of about 26 times. And that is up from the extreme low of 17 times a year ago. And that represents a 15% premium to the historical average. So valuations are above average, but the key point here is that earnings growth is inflecting. And it looks set to return to the double digits this year. In fact, the third quarter results um, that were announced in, uh, in October and November were significantly better than expected. And uh, we think they marked the turn after seven consecutive quarters of deceleration. And in many ways, this setup looks comparable to the beginning of 2016, which was the bottom of the prior earnings cycle from which the Robo Index produced its best two-year return. In terms of uh, sector dynamics, um, all but one of the index subsectors increased in Q4. We saw integration, logistics automation, food and agriculture, and security leading the gains. And in the meantime, consumer declined. By region, uh, European factory automation champions have performed. We saw Germany and Switzerland leading after a weak Q3, while the U.S. and Japan lagged. Now, let's review some of the big movers during the quarter. The top contributor was NVIDIA. This is the global leader in graphics processing units, and NVIDIA continues to dominate in the four main markets it pursues. That is gaming, data centers, visualization, and automotive. Its GPUs have become the de facto standard for the training of AI in the cloud, in high-performance computing, and in autonomous driving as well as video gaming. Another top contributor in the quarter was Toshiba Machine, which was up 32%. This Japanese machine tool and robotics company continued its surge from extremely depressed levels a year ago. The sales returns to growth in Q3, and the outlook for China improved. China accounts for 20% of the company's revenue. And Toshiba Machine continues to look significantly undervalued here. It has a large cash and securities position, including a 15% stake in another Japanese company called Nuflare, which both Toshiba and Hoya offered to acquire during Q4. iRobot was the bottom performer. The stock was down 16% in Q4. This is the global leader in consumer robotics, the maker of the Roomba robotics vacuum systems, and the company reduced its earnings outlook uh, because of the U.S. tariffs on Chinese goods that continue to weigh on its profitability. Uh, iRobot reversed course on its planned price increases to mitigate tariff costs and is working to uh, shifting some production outside of China. Vocera uh, was another detractor. The stock was down 16%. Vocera is a communications technology company uh, that uh, removes the friction involved in patient care primarily in hospitals, with a strong software platform and its badge, which is a, a small hands-free voice-activated device that is used by uh, hospital employees to communicate with one another. Vocera lowered its guidance uh, due to a few deals that are taking longer to close than uh, anticipated. This longer sales cycle is a function of growing deal size. The contracts have grown over the last few years um, to the million-dollar range from the thousand-dollar range. And in our view, this growing deal size will actually add visibility to future performance, and the company remains very well positioned. Finally, I want to make some uh, uh, comments on the robot portfolio as it currently stands. Our methodology combines this research approach for company selection that is based on long-term value drivers with the discipline of index investing we more or less equal weight the stocks to give fair representation to smaller companies, which in many cases are attractive takeover targets and they offer higher growth potential. And every quarter, we reconstitute and rebalance the index, which means that we sell our winners and we buy our losers, which is a way to sort of ensure that, that the index buys low and sells high. And if you look at the pie charts here, the key word is diversification. 
diversification uh, across sectors of the classification. Across countries, we have more than a dozen countries represented, and also diversification across the market cap spectrum, where there is a strong tilt towards small and mid caps, which represent nearly two thirds of the portfolio. And uh, the overlap with traditional market indices, such as the S&P 500 or the MACI World Equity Index is very low, under 4%. So investors generally don't own uh, these stocks. And uh, with that, I will pass it on to Nina to uh, discuss HTEC. Thanks, Jeremy. Uh, so, as many of you know, one of the subsectors in the robo portfolio that Jeremy just discussed is healthcare. And over the last six years, uh, due to our research in that field, it's led us to believe that healthcare will be leading one of the next big waves of innovation and that we're still in very early days. So, last June, we, we launched the health, uh, Healthcare Technology and Innovation Index, HTEC. And, uh, and so, this is an index that's solely dedicated to healthcare. Like Robo, HTEC is a diversified strategy that's comprised of over 80 companies determined through fundamental analysis conducted by our research and advisory teams. In the fourth quarter of last year, HTEC generated 13%, and over the full year 2019, the index backtest shows a return of 34.9%, which outperformed global equities. Healthcare in general lagged the broader market in returns, driven by uncertainty in the political landscape, such as drug pricing and healthcare reform in the US. But that said, med tech stocks remained strong throughout the year, and there were breakthroughs in the gene therapy field that helped drive a comeback for life science companies in Q4. On the right side here, you can see how we segment our HTEC portfolio across nine different subsectors that we believe represent the most innovative themes in healthcare. In terms of performance, precision medicine led the pack up 32%, driven by the trends I described earlier in life sciences. Regenerative medicine gained 23% in the quarter, and data analytics was the only subsector with negative returns in Q4. Let's take a closer look at some of the bigger movers in the quarter. Let's see, our biggest mover is Arrowhead Pharmaceuticals. Uh, it was a top performer of 125% in the quarter. Arrowhead Pharmaceuticals is a company in our precision medicine subsector that's a technology leader in gene therapy. Um, they focus primarily in an area called RNAi. The I stands for interference. So if you think of interference in sports when a player blocks a pass, similarly, RNAi blocks a gene that causes a disease. And during the quarter, Arrowhead announced positive data from three different clinical trials that they're running in partnership with J&J. &J. The company also submitted an application to the FDA for a new trial to treat carcinoma. This is big news because it expands them um, into carcinoma and beyond their core business of hepatitis treatments. Um, so RNAi has been pretty hot, and, and we wanted to spend a little time talking about that. Uh, there was also an acquisition. Novartis acquired the medicines company, um, who's another RNAi player, and this drove uh, a positive impact on adjacent companies, and Arrowhead was one of the benefactors of that move. It, it actually failed uh, to meet our quantitative screen for Q1 of this year, so uh, Arrowhead Pharmaceuticals has actually now been excluded from HTEC index. Um, in terms of the lowest performer, Fluidime, which is a company that provides labs with solutions that analyze diseases and therapies. Um, Fluidime had a disappointing Q3 caused by increasing competitive threats. But that said, the company's got a strong market position in mass cytometry and increased investment in sales, we believe is gonna drive Fluidime um, growth and they're well positioned for cross-selling new products and we think over time we'll see some acceleration. Um, here we discuss our latest additions to the HTEC index. l Nylon is another RNAi player. Um, in fact, they are the first to market with their therapy on Patro. ConMed is a global leader in surgical and patient monitoring products and services. CRISPR Therapeutics is a company that revolutionized gene editing with its innovation in CRISPR technology. 
Eurofins is a global leader in food, environment, and pharmaceutical product testing and agro, agro science services. And then these are the stocks that failed our quantitative screens in the quarter. I already mentioned Arrowhead, also Avenos and uh, Waters. As you can see here um, on the upper left, medical instruments is the subsector that has the largest presence in our index. However, there is also strong diversification across all of the other subsectors. Our diversification in these areas also translates to diversification across small, large, and mid-cap companies, as illustrated in the bottom middle chart. On the right, you can see that HTEC has very little overlap with other leading healthcare indices and the broader market. And here, this slide fur further illustrates how HTEC's diversification is a key differentiator. The global healthcare index is much more heavily weighed in large cap pharmaceutical companies and has less exposure to some of the areas that we believe to be more innovative and nimble. And now we're going to focus a little bit more closely on one of our subsectors where we're seeing a lot of growth, which is robotics. First, in the OR, the robotic assisted surgery field is currently a $5 billion market and it's expected to grow to 25 billion by 2025. Today, the market is less than 5% penetrated, so there's a long runway for growth. HTEC investors have exposure to this trend with companies like Intuitive Surgical and Globus Medical. Further noting the opportunity in this space, we're seeing recent M&A. Last year, two HTEC members were parents of two of the largest robotic deals in 2019. Siemens acquired Corindus and Stryker acquired Cardin. Adoption has been strong in ab abdominal surgical areas so far, but we expect new innovation over time in other areas to drive further penetration and growth over the long term. Now, the operating room isn't the only place where we're seeing robots in hospitals. Another HTEC member, OmniCell, uses robots to automate the pharmacy. Robotics pick all the drugs needed for a patient's prescription, and they also keep track of inventory and conduct data analytics to determine where, uh, where improvements can be made. Most importantly, when they can automate this function, it frees up time for pharmacists so that they can help patients manage their medication regimen. And ultimately, this goes a long way to reduce medication error, which happens to be one of the leading causes of deaths today. And now I'm going to pass it on to Lisa, who's going to talk about THINK. Thank you, Nina. THINK Index, um, it's a strategy that captures the mega trends of artificial intelligence as companies, small or large, are seeing acceleration of growth from the AI deployment that is occurring around the world today. We believe that AI is poised to touch every sector and industry groups, groups globally with spending in the hundreds of billions dedicated to implementing and enabling AI over the next decade or so. We believe that we have identified a unique strategy and methodology to capture this opportunity. For 2019, uh, the Think Index had a strong performance, returning over 37%. Um, the fourth quarter particularly was very strong, gaining over 11%. In fact, all of the 11 subsectors for the index finished in positive territory for the quarter. Um, the best performing sector was semiconductor, followed by cloud providers, uh, driven by very strong earnings results from the group, particularly by Chinese cloud provider companies such as Baidu and Alibaba. These companies are finally starting to see some operating leverage during the quarter, and its user engagements were also better than expected. Uh, we expect that Baidu and Alibaba will continue to show progress in monetization of its platforms with integrated features using machine learning for better user experience and conversion over time. Uh, another subsector to highlight is business process subsector. It demonstrated strong performance led by solid results from various index members, including FinTech solution provider, Fair Isaac, and leading RPA vendor, Blue Prism. Um, business momentum continues from this group as organizations around the world are implementing, implementing digital transformation. 
Uh, the bottom contributors were healthcare and consumer during the quarter. Healthcare was a strong performer, I think, for most of the year, but this quarter took a bit of a breather, combined with the index having a relatively a small weighting at the moment. Meanwhile, uh, consumer subsectors under performance was driven by iRobot and Grubhub, who reported weaker than expected earnings results during the quarter. Um, just want to highlight, though, that since December quarter end, shares of Grub and iRobot have recovered and are up double digits for the month of January so far. To dig a bit deeper as to the app performance in the semiconductor sector was that the semi-industry began to demonstrate healthier supply-demand environment, driven mostly by strong deployment of 5G and built in high-performance computing, autonomous vehicles, and AI applications driving semiconductor content. In addition, leading-edge logic, memory, and GPUs continues to play a key role in emerging technologies, and we anticipate this to continue throughout the year. Meanwhile, uh, semiconductor equipment sector had a phenomenal year in 2019, and we believe that equipment spending appears sustainable as drive towards advanced nodes to driving the new capacity bill for deployment of 5G and AI technologies. There were many notable performers during the quarter. Um, Tesla was a top performer, posting unexpectedly strong earnings profitability. Uh, the pioneer in electric vehicles with advanced autonomous software technologies now developing its own AI hardware. Uh, the earlier than anticipated launch of the Model Y cars and better than expected sell through of their flagship model drove the stock up 74% for the quarter. Um, Tesla shares continue to climb even after posting their earnings report to record highs to finish the year on a very strong note after reporting that it delivered over 367,000 cars, which is an increase of 45% year over year. Meanwhile, NVIDIA was a strong performer for Sync as well in fourth quarter, up 35%. Uh, the global leader in GPUs has regained some of its momentum during the quarter as they're not seeing much competition in the AI deep learning and neural networking markets due to the large ecosystem the company has created around its QDA software. In terms of detractors, uh, iRobot was a bottom performer during the quarter for Think as trade war impact was more severe than anyone had anticipated. Shares declined 60%, 16% during the quarter. And Arista Networks also underperformed with a decline of 15%. Arista is a data switch company providing applications in AI and serverless computing. And they provided a weaker than expected outlook due to a large order pushout from a large customer. Uh, while the magnitude of the miss was great and visibility appears limited at the moment, uh, we believe this is a short-term setback for a company with a strong technological advantage in a promising cloud data center market. Uh, meanwhile, for the fourth quarter rebalance, we had one addition this quarter. Um, company Verisite is a 1.4 billion market cap company, uh, is a leading molecular diagnostic uh, company founded with a mission to improve diagnostic accuracy using genomic data combined with machine learning and deep learning model. Um, Verisite is entering a new multi-product growth cycle with a strong secular tailwind as commercial reimbursement environments favorable for diagnostic markets right now that dramatically reduces um, unnecessary surgeries. Uh, their test kits um, both improve diagnos diagnosis and save on healthcare costs which provides significant value for the providers and payers in this value-driven healthcare landscape. The company has developed a proprietary gene expression test for the thyroid cancer market and has been very successful so far. And the company hopes to do the same for lung cancer and pulmonary fibrosis. Uh, machine learning algorithms are used in all of their three products to improve the accuracy of diagnosis to help patients' outcomes.
And this slide highlights uh, portfolio ca characteristics of its broader AI ecosystem and its global exposure. And it's important to point out that it has a very low overlap with the MSCI World Index, as well as S&P 500 Index and various other global tech indices. And um, investing in a think index, the back test indicated that the fund returned over 30% in 2019. And beginning with a five-year back test from January 2014, the Think Index returned a total 265%, largely outperforming the larger world equity index of 56%. And I will turn it back to Jeremy for the closing statement. Thank you, Lisa, and uh, thank you all for listening. And thank you for your questions, which uh, we will answer offline. Please don't hesitate to reach out directly to our team with any question and sign up for our newsletter, which goes out every other week with investment research and insights into robotics, AI, and healthcare technologies. Goodbye, and we look forward to speaking to you again next quarter.